Hi, so we're now going to talk about a typical day and the qualities and skills needed to become an artist. So a typical day for me usually begins with a daily stand-up, which is where the whole art team has a meeting on Teams and each person takes it in turn to explain what they're working on that day. So they're great for keeping everyone up to date with the projects and is a chance to explain anything that you might need help with. So for the majority of the rest of my day, I then continue to work on my assigned project, usually, usually bouncing between Maya, where I create my 3D models, a substance painter, where I then texture the model and then export the model into the game engine to see how it actually looks in game. So it's great because even as a junior artist, I'm given loads of trust and creative freedom to create the artwork for games. Uh, but the help is always available to me through either my art director and any fellow artist. So after I've finished a piece of work, it's then passed on to a senior to get given feedback, which means I'm constantly learning and improving. And it's such a rewarding feeling when you get to actually see uh, your piece of work in a game. Qualities and skills. The single most important skill to become an artist in the games industry is your passion for creating amazing artwork. When I uh, get an, an artist in applying for a job, it doesn't really matter what qualifications they've got or what you know what what skills they have. Really, the most important thing is the art portfolio. So spend all your time thinking about your art portfolio and your artistic ability. So that's colour, composition, and knowing when something looks right. The second most important skill is is being not not being scared of learning computer software. I think um, you know you are using software all day every day, so having a kind of you know an ability to embrace new software and not be afraid of it is really really useful if you want to work in games. The third most important thing would probably be working, uh, being good at team working. Game work, making games is very much a collaborative thing. People work together, and um, you work alongside designers and programmers and producers and you know all sorts of people, and it's and it is very much a, a shared uh, way of working, and so. People who like to work as part of a team, I think, would really enjoy working in games. And finally, being good at problem solving. I mean, in the years that I've worked in games, the software has changed so much, the consoles have changed so much. Every, you know, every single game of all the games I've worked on, no two games are the same. So you're always coming across new obstacles and new challenges, but actually having the kind of mindset where it's like, okay, I've not done this before, but I'm sure I could work it out with the help of everybody else. Um, and, a, you know, a good problem solving mind is quite useful. But I do want to emphasise that your artistic ability is absolutely the most important quality. So next, we've just attached uh, some links of example portfolios from myself and a few other artists who have recently started as juniors here at D3T. So we thought it's a good way to judge the quality to aim for uh, when creating your portfolio for a job. That might hopefully give you some more inspiration to what kind of art you actually want to specialise in. Roots into the industry. So traditionally, uh, so for probably about the past 15 years or so, the main way into the games industry has, has sort of been through doing a degree. Um, and there are over 70 games art degree courses in the UK now. Uh, so there's a lot to choose from. Probably all of them have different specialisms. I couldn't really tell you which were the best or the worst, but I can tell you that just from in 2020, we have recruited artists from these five here. Um, so that's one way in, but we just wanted to suggest some other ways in as well. So what, another way, maybe if you did, you ended up doing like I did a fine art degree, you can then do a, a postgraduate course or an MA in uh, digital games as a transition. Or if you didn't want to do a degree, then have a think about things like apprenticeships and BTEC courses and internships. Uh, there are lots of internships and apprenticeships around the country, various different studios, and D3T do them too. And with BTEC courses, that would be so a level four is equivalent to the first year of uni and a level five is equivalent to the second year of uni. So have a look out for some BTEC courses. There aren't loads at the moment, but they're getting more and more each year. So uh, do some exploring into opportunities for BTEC. And finally, another alternative that you might want to consider is actually teaching yourself. Um, if you're the kind of person who's really self-motivated and really enjoys, you know, working, you know, on your own work and, and exploring it that way, there are loads of uh, tutorials online. And if you're if you're on some of these websites like ArtStation, then there are other artists on there who are really willing to give you lots of feedback. Um, the important things from a financial point of view is you, you'd obviously save the money of doing it, you know, of having to pay for a degree, but you would have to buy the software. So for Max or Maya, that's uh, just under £2,000 for, for the year. But other software like Photoshop, Substance, or ZBrush, you can just pay monthly, so that's not quite as expensive. So these are just some alternative ways of, of 
uh, getting into games. But just get a good portfolio together one way or the other. So uh, if you've enjoyed our talk and are interested in game art still, uh, we'll end it with some resource sites to help you get started. So first we have ArtStation, where artists of all levels showcase their work and portfolios. And it's also a great place to look for inspiration and to see the art of any recent games. So following this, we have a couple of great tutorial sites like Polygon Academy for free tutorials, uh, with EXP and Udemy offering more in-depth paid for tutorials. So after that is 80 level, which has hundreds of articles and breakdowns for anything game art related, as well as three great sites after that for game news and MCB develop, which offers online game conferences and events to take part in. So lastly, we've linked YouTube as it was one of the most important resources for me at uni, uh, just for quickly problem solving uh, and has endless tutorials for beginners uh, and also more advanced tutorials as well. Hi, we hope you found this interesting and please do get in touch if you want to hear more about being an artist in games. Thank you for listening and good luck with your studies.